Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we move over to present-day Burleigh County, North Dakota in what was called the Dakota Territories for the Battle of Stony Lake on July 28, 1863. Yet again, the attacking force was commanded by Union Brigadier General Henry Hastings Sibley with more than 2,000 Union soldiers along with his Native American scouts, including men of the Sioux Tribe and 100 artillery pieces, all part of the 1st Minnesota Mounted Rangers. Sibley was joined by elements of the 10th Minnesota Volunteer Infantry Regiment. Defending, again, was the War Chief Red Cap, and he was supported by the Santee Sioux, the Teuton Sioux, Yankton, and Yanktonai. The combined Sioux warriors numbered between 1,600 and 2,500, depending on the sources. Today's victory went to the Union. It had been two days since the last battle at Dead Buffalo Lake, as Union General Sibley was pursuing the Sioux Following Red Cap, who had been joined by some Lakota warriors, he finally caught up with the Sioux at Stony Lake, or rather Red Cap had caught up with him. Sibley was forced to camp at Stony Lake because his horses were exhausted from the constant pursuit and low-level engagements. Finally, after some rest, Sibley and some of his headquarters staff, who were being escorted by elements of the 10th Minnesota Voluntary Infantry Regiment, left camp. They found outside the camp on the crest of a hill a line of mounted Sioux warriors preparing for battle. Sibley reported back in official communications that there were between 2,200 and 2,500 tribal warriors. The Sioux have subsequently said there were only 1,600 warriors, which would be more in line with the previous encounters. The Sioux immediately attacked and attempted to flank Sibley and his escorts and surround the camp itself, but found that because most of their warriors were armed with traditional bow and arrows, they were too heavily outgunned. The Union began firing two of its mountain howitzers, along with their much longer range rifles, forcing the Sioux to retreat towards the Missouri River approximately 30 miles away. The Sioux reached a river and began immediately to fashion boats of buffalo hides and willow branches, and easily escaped that night by ferrying their supplies and those who couldn't swim into boats while the rest swam the river. The casualties for both sides were incredibly light, with the Union suffering two dead soldiers and the Sioux losing three or more warriors. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.